How's it going, Eliminators? Today, we're gonna to be working on a John Deere that has a broken drive idler spring. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So I have in the shop today a John Deere 1128DE, and we've removed the front auger housing from the rear half of the snowblower. Now there's a cable that hooks up to the snowblower chute there, so we just removed that from the auger housing and laid it off to the side so we don't have to remove that completely. But we had to remove the front auger housing from the rear half of the machine because we needed access at the drive pulley here. Because on this particular machine, there is a broken drive belt tension spring that was just in the bottom of the access panel. So when we flip the unit up and remove the access panel, this is what we found. The end of the spring was all mangled like that. So going to Google, I typed in John Deere 1128DE parts diagram. Sure enough, I was able to find a full breakdown on a site I believe called Weingarts. And here is the drive belt there. Here is the impeller belt there to run the auger. And this is a little bracket that pivots for the idler, for the drive there. And that is the spring that we're looking for. It has a longer end on one end than it does on the other. And it is number 39 on the illustration here. Now that spring is a John Deere M124254. And that's the spring that I needed to order. And this is what leads me to the next part of the video, which was basically the availability of this spring in Canada and how hard it was to actually acquire this spring. Now, I'm not a John Deere parts dealer, so whenever I need John Deere parts that, you know, Stens or MTD doesn't sell, things that aren't really generic parts like belts or bearings, I have to call the John Deere dealer, and I have two local to me. One is in Dunville, a little bit farther. The other one is in Welland. They basically just sell John Deere parts. They don't do any servicing. So when I called them to order this spring, John Deere Canada said that I actually had to order five of them and they were going to be about $20.99 each. So that's going to be over $100. And then on top of that, I have to pay 13% HST, which is a harmonized sales tax. So easily, just for one spring, I would be looking at paying well over $100. So just like anything, whenever I have a part that is hard to get in Canada, first thing I do is I go to eBay, and sure enough, I was able to find the spring that I needed. However, it said through eBay that this spring would not ship to Canada. So I messaged the seller directly. He said that there must have been some kind of error or glitch in the eBay system. And I just want to give a huge shout out to Sturdy Supply and Rental from New York because they went outside of eBay and shipped this to us direct. Believe it or not, this spring costs $3.99 US. And then we had to pay, I think it was like $14 or something for shipping. And then obviously there's going to be tax and import fees on top of that. However, this spring cost us well under $100. So big shout out to Sturdy Supply and Rental out of New York. He shipped me the one spring and it cost me less than what I would have spent here in Canada. Now it was much easier for us to remove the auger housing just so we had a little bit more room to work here because I've never changed a drive tension spring on one of these John Deere's before and going from the backside you really don't have a lot of room to get into the area that you need to. So up here we have the impeller idler arm and then back here we have the drive impeller arm. You guys can see that one is loose because that's the one that the spring broke on. So what I was thinking was I'm going to remove this pulley and then we'll have lots of room that I can check out where exactly this spring hooks onto. And then hopefully that bolt and the pulley slides off without issue. And as you can see, I'm just using a little bit of penetrating oil to help loosen things off. So using a 15 16 socket, we'll try to remove this with my Milwaukee Impact. So that came off nice and easy. Now I'm going to try to remove the pulley here. And these can sometimes seize. And I saw one video where a guy took a bent piece of round bar and made like a horseshoe. And then he welded that horseshoe to the pulley. And then he used a slide hammer 
and remove the pulley that way. That was a really ingenious idea. This, however, has a little bit of wobble to it, so I'm hoping this comes off. We can see that it appears that the pulley is keyed to the shaft there. So a little bit of penetrating oil in there and hopefully this thing slides off easily. So I got it moving real easy now. However, the pulley is hitting the bracket for the impeller idler arm there. So there's three bolts and I can remove that bracket and then hopefully remove that pulley. These are just 3 8 bolts here and I may get lucky and just be able to remove the top two and then I can loosen this bottom one here and maybe just rotate the bracket out of the way. What do we think? Let's see if I can get this off. See this. I was thinking something like that. And with that rotated out of the way, pull the pulley right off. Be careful not to lose the key that's in there. And now we can kind of have an idea of how everything hooks up here. I can see there's a spring back there. That is for the impeller there. And then here's the bracket that the spring for the drive hooks up to. So this is where I'm gonna have to try to figure out where that spring mounts to on the lower end. Now there is a sealed bearing down here and I just wanted to show you guys, there is end play on the shaft. However, if I go up and down, I'm pushing up right now and the shaft is not moving. That bearing's good, everything's free. So I don't think I'm gonna be replacing that, but I will be greasing everything. So I'm gonna be looking for uh, grease fittings in here and you guys can see all the belt dressing in here from when the belt got smoked. But I'll tell you one thing, before we reinstall the pulley onto this shaft, a little bit of Permatex nickel anti-seize is going on there so that if I ever have to do this repair again, that pulley will slide off nice and easily. So once again, on the diagram, it shows the longer end at the top there, and the bottom end is the short side. And then it has those two holes that I'm gonna have to choose which one I put the spring through. So it's gonna be something like that. We're gonna hook in, and then this goes down towards the bottom, I'm assuming to the left side because it is pivoting. So it would make sense that the belt runs on the inside of that pulley. We wanna keep tension that way, which would mean the spring is pulling this way. So when we first received this snowblower, like I said, the spring was in the bottom of the access panel because it had fallen out once the drive belt got smoked. So I don't know where exactly this spring hooks into. However, you have to look for little clues to help indicate where a spring may hook onto. And if you look right above the drive axle, there's a large opening. And I'll put an arrow on the screen where you can see a little mark in the paint. And that's exactly where the drive tension spring hooks onto. So with just me holding it by hand, because if you let it go, this area down here, sorry for the lighting, but the area down there, like look at how loose it is when it's loose like that. But when it tightens up, it'll look something like that, which looks right. But the fact that it rotates into that large hole there, I'm not too sure if that's proper or not. But this is the problem when I get stuff where you know, I've never worked on one of these before, so I've never had this apart. There's absolutely no images of an 1128DE with the drive pulley off, so I can't see where that hooks up. And like I said, if I get a piece of equipment where the spring is broken, you really don't know, like on that one, that's pretty obvious where that spring hooks up to. But down here, it's not so obvious. And if we look at the diagram, it's not like they give you a broken line or a dotted line to show you where exactly these springs are hooking up. And I even tried to pull up the service manual for one of these 1128DEs and there's no information on where those springs hook up, or at least I couldn't find any. So I'm kind of just guessing here. And then additionally, while we're replacing the drive idler spring there, we were gonna go ahead and replace the belts. So looking at number 36 and also number 15, for the drive and the impeller belts. If we flip over, I just wrote these part numbers down here. So the drive belt is an M140481, and it turned out to be a 3 8 by 33.63 raw edge belt. And the impeller belt was an M143796, 
which turned out to be a half by 40 inch belt and it did not specify whether it was raw edge or Kevlar. Now the old belts that we removed from this snowblower were a little bit longer than the specifications that the parts diagram listed. So we went ahead and ordered some Stens belts. Now you're going to notice that these measurements here don't match up with what the parts listing said. However, we've been noticing that the Stens belts are slightly longer than the measurements they list. So we have here a 3 8 by 33 and a half that actually measured 3 8 by 33.7. So this belt should be a perfect match and it is also a raw edge belt. So it'll give us a nice bite on the drive there. And this belt here is a half by 39 and a half that actually measures closer to half by 40. Once again, it is a raw edge. So it should give our impeller and our auger lots of traction to throw the snow. So with the spring in that position, the pulley seats all the way back on the shaft there. I have to pull this spring up to loosen some tension, but check this out. It spins and it's not hitting that spring. So I think I might try to rope the belt on, double check the tension. I'm not sure if that's gonna be the proper length belt again, but I'm just kinda of going little by little here and seeing what works. Okay, so I have the pulley bolted back up. It is keyed, again, Permatex nickel anti-seize on there, so that'll come off easy the next time. The tension spring is hooked up, and I mean, that feels normal to me. So I'm assuming that uh, hooking it into that larger section is how it is supposed to be. The only thing is this belt, way too short. So if I wrap it around the bottom of the pulley here and come up to the top, even when I pull this idler all the way back, there's no way that a 33.63 is gonna work. Absolutely no way. All right, so I measured the belt that we took off of this snowblower when it came in for the repair, and it measures 3 eighths by 35 and an eighth. Now, I just got off the phone with John Deere, and sure enough, they said that the M140481 belt measured 3 eighths by 35 inches, so I'm assuming that this belt may have stretched about an eighth of an inch. Now, when that spring failed, this drive belt obviously took a little bit of a beating, so it definitely needed to be replaced. But like I said, when I ran that number, it came up as a 3 8 by 33.63, a little bit shorter than the belt we had removed. And I thought that made sense to me because if we come over to the original spring, you can see here that it broke, but that it's bent and shorter than the original. Because you guys have to remember the OEM spring comes out farther. So I assumed that when the spring broke, someone bent this spring a little bit shorter and then hooked it up again. Now hooking up a shorter spring would put more tension on the drive idler pulley and put more tension on the drive belt, which would have made sense to run a slightly longer belt on a spring that was a little bit shorter and had a little bit more tension. Now I have two different 3 8 by 35 belts here. I have a standard 3L 350. So this is a 3 8 by 35 raw edge. And then I have over here a 3 8 by 35 cogged. Now a cogged belt has these grooves cut into them and they're for cooling. So basically what you get is more surface area on the inner V of the belt and the more surface area gives you better cooling. So I'm probably just gonna try this one here. This is a PIX belt and we'll just see if uh, it works for fitment. Okay, so the 3 8 by 35 is now installed. There is nice tension there, and it fits the groove very nicely. Picks 3L350, you guys can see anti-static, oil and heat resistant, and that fits nice. Engine turns over, and that's gonna have awesome tension. So that's what it is, 3 8 by 35. So that just goes to show you, don't always trust information that you get online. So I'm not sure if that outdoor power equipment site is user generated, but I'll put a screenshot up on screen just so you guys can see the information that I had that I was going off of. So right there, you just search the part number on Google, and then normally you can type length after it. And a lot of times you'll get a whole bunch of information from different sites. And if they all say the same thing, that's nine times out of 10, the length of your belt but sometimes you won't find any information. And in this case, this was the only site that was listing the length of this particular belt. But 
at the end of the day, I got the right belt installed and I can get this snowblower put back together. Well, that's gonna wrap up today's video. Like I said, you can't always trust the information that you get online. Sometimes it's just incorrect. But at the end of the day, I was able to find the right length belt, get that installed because I had one in stock. So it just goes to show you that it's always nice to have a large inventory of parts. But with that being said, if you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week, check channel out for new content, and as always guys, thanks for watching.